In this video, we're going to take a quick look at Bifrost Aero inside of Maya 2016. So Aero inside of Maya 2016 is a way of creating volumetric smoke and wispy types of effects similar to what you would get inside of Maya fluids, but without the limitations uh, of the volume because of the adaptive solve and the adaptive nature of the solve that Bifrost offers. So you can get larger volumes uh, with better performance and not have to worry about the overhead that that contains. And Daryl has a great video on showing exactly how that works with some laser blasts in the Maya 2016 uh, demos that are online. But one of the things that uh, I found that I thought was would be useful is to create some clouds with it. And I, I've wanted to do this inside of Maya for, for quite a while since uh, I saw the Paths of Hate video and the demonstration that the guys from Platige showed in their hardware clouds and there have been tons of videos online of how to do that in Max and uh, there's multiple ways of doing it inside of Maya but you run into a few limitations here and there with regards to color per vertex and different things that um, I thought really um, cause it to be a little bit prohibitive in terms of speed and that kind of thing so Bifrost Arrow offers a really nice way of, of doing that. So the way we're going to work with this is I'm going to create these um, sort of cloud objects and I'm just going to create by using shift right mouse button clicking on this object and transforming the component. Now if I just do this by default I get just sort of a, a movement in this case according to the normal but I can use this random value to sort of distort that just a little bit and that's pretty useful. Uh, I might even want to do that on the vertex level so let's again right mouse button click on these guys we'll just uh, move those out a little bit randomize it again and that gives me something somewhat interesting um, and this is just sort of a, a canvas that I'm going to use to sort of start my cloud. We'll expand that out just a little bit and you can, there's no rules here, so we can maybe use soft select to sort of move this guy in a little bit, and we're all set and done. So I've created this little sphere inside here, and this one's called ball. And what I'm going to do is use the paint scripts tool to operate on this. Now, in this case, I've already done this. Uh, so you can see that I've got ball entered up in the geometry. If I don't have this, um, if this doesn't come up, what you need to do is go down to the setup section inside the paint scripts tool and just type in geometry paint once you hit enter this interface will come up and what I'm going to do is coat this outer sort of weird object with these little spheres so you can do all kinds of things here this doesn't really have to have any again not really a whole lot of rules here um, and one thing you'll notice is that every time I bring this up it has this little space just want to make sure that you delete that and I'm going to crank the jitter value up to one and I'm going to take this value and I'm just going to set it to a little bit lower value. Uh, we'll just stick to somewhere in there. Not really, again, a hard and set value. And once I'm done, I'm going to hit flood and we get all these little spheres around my object. Now that's a little bit too small, so let's bump this up just a little bit more. We'll flood it again. And what I'm trying to do is coat this so that it's pretty much covered all the way around. I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is boolean these together. So I'm going to pause that because it takes about 15 seconds and there's no need to watch me do that. Okay, and that's done. So you can see that I've created a boolean object out of all these guys and really I don't need these inner pieces again. I'll just hide those. So from here we could even, if we wanted to take this a little bit further, uh, let's select the verts on this and we'll, again we'll transform the components just to disturb it just a little bit more and we get a little bit more noise in what's going to be our cloud. So again, we'll delete the history real quick, and I'm going to go into my Bifrost menus and just create arrow out of this. And by default, it doesn't look like much. If we hide our cloud uh, or our geometry, you can see that we just get this um, solid mass, and that's because what we're looking at are the particles that are making up the object. So you can see my caps lock got turned on there. We've got the heads up display that warns us of that. Uh, so what we want to do is just turn on voxel display and I'll turn off the particles and there we have our cloud. So right away you can see that the shading looks pretty good already. You can start to see some of the detail in the geometry um, but we don't have any lighting and that's what really gives a cloud its, its, uh, its look. And so we'll go into our lights. We'll create a quick directional light and of course we have to go into lit mode. Hit the 7 key and now we can start to see that we get some pretty cool effects from this. And 
so there's a couple of things that control the look of this inside the Bifrost arrow material. So there's two things. One is the resolution, but we can stick with what we've got now. I'm going to select the shader so we can see what's going on here. Um, we've got Within the shader, we've got the density, and as we turn that up and down, you see it kind of thickens out the, the outer edge of the clouds. Um, kind of turn that up maybe just a little bit. And then the emission absorption and scattering dictate what the lighting looks like. So the emission is going to basically make it like a light source um, in uh, some respects. Uh, so the color is pretty important. So uh, if we want to get just a little bit more of a blue uh, daytime effect of that, maybe a brighter cloud, it's pretty easy to do. And then we can start playing around with the intensity. And as we dial that up and turn it, move around to the back side of the cloud, you start to see we get a little bit of nice backlighting depending on where you're sitting. And now we start to lose a little bit of the detail. So we can uh, maybe change a couple of things on the shader. We can add some of the shadow opacity. We can increase that just a little bit to bump that up. Uh, we can increase the absorption. So it's going to absorb the light or uh, obviously absorb more light or less light. And then there's scattering within that. So we can scatter the light uh, within the cloud pretty nicely. And we could even add another light. But the last thing I'll do just to add some of the detail is to go into the Bifrost Aero container and change this master voxel size. So as I turn this down, it's going to increase the detail that it's going to pick up in that piece of geometry that you was, we used to create that. So I'm going to dial this down to about 0.3. Make sure we hit the rewind button. And you can see down in the timeline that Bifrost recalculates that, and now we start to see a little bit more of the lighting on each one of those pieces. And again, all of that can be changed with the absorption and the um, scattering within the shader itself. So I thought that was pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed it.